Okay, so we're going to spend just a couple of minutes looking at the log functions and the EDX functions, and I've already drawn these so that we've got them up here. These are inverse functions, so that means that this one will reflect across the Y equals X line, if you like. These are 45 degree reflections. So if I take this curve and reflect it over this line, I get the other one. That tells us that these are inverse functions. Y equals E to the X will always look like this because any number to the zero power is always one. Conversely, when you work with the uh, log X function and the natural log function, natural log, by the way, is base E and it's pronounced ln. So this is ln X and log X. If I have Y equals the ln of one, that means that the power I was using is zero to get a one, and therefore these all cross at this location. So one of the things these two both have in common, or any log function for that matter with any base, will always go through those two points. When you do an inverse function, just to, to hit inverse functions really quickly, an inverse function flips x and y. That's the primary thing. Now, fundamentally, there's a lot more that goes on in that than just switching X and Y. But for all intents and purposes, if you had a graph like this, X and Y, and you had one, two, two goes with three, three goes with four, the inverse function, if this was your F of X, your inverse function would switch the coordinate values. So the great part about um, inverse function is if you know one, you know the other because all you have to do is reverse the x and y values. So when we talk about being an inverse operation, an inverse operation does the same thing. So that is to say this, if I have ln x equals 5, another way for us to write that is e to the 5 equals x. If I have log 2 log base 2 is how this is read, of x equals 9, then I am saying 2 to the ninth power equals x. So the key part about reading these is being able to read them. This says the power you put on, for example, e is 5 to get x. Now I realize that in English that reads very awkwardly, but in math we understand what we're saying. So if this is base E, which we never write, just like uh, if we write log, it's understood to be 10, the power is 5. Power is 5. And the power goes on what value? The power goes on the value of E. And you receive this number as your output. In this case, when I read this one, it says the power I put on 2 to get x is 9. So whatever 2 to the ninth is, that's the value that would go in this location. Now, when we work these, if we want to solve these equations, if we're given this one, we undo it by doing the log function. If we have the log function, we undo it by raising it as a power. So for example, if I wanted to work a problem, and like I said, most of, your, most of the folks you're going to be working with will be doing base 10. So if I say log of 3 is x, what I'm really saying is what power do I put on 10? What power do I put on 10? Well, the power is x. What do I get? Well, the power I put on x is something that turns my 10 into a 3. Now, because I can't do this in my head, I'm going to get that x is about some sort of fraction over here. And the reason it's some sort of fraction is because 3 is only part of 10. Now, the catch is, if I do it the other way, what if I ask this question? 10 to the x minus 3 is 2. Well, if I have it set up the other way, of course, what I tell my students is, you take the log of both sides, take the log of both sides, and of course this is what you would get in your calculator, right? Calculator use on this imperative. 
on this one, the way we undo the same thing is we have, now we know the power is x minus 3. So to get this, I take the log of both sides. Because the log base 10 of 10, these undo one another. Just like a square root and a square undo one another. And so we get x minus 3 equals the log of 2. Now the log of 2, I don't happen to know. But I do know, I know what it is if it was lawn. Um, but I would add 3, and so on my calculator I'd have my students do 3 plus log 2, and that would be the answer that I need. So that's a quick run through of the log, log rhythmic and exponential functions. I don't believe you have hardly any of those, if any, on the uh, GED test, but just so you have seen them, we'll at least show them to you. Okay, so as promised, we need to do some applications, and the big application areas that you guys are going to be working with are primarily geometry and primarily statistics, okay? So let's start with the statistics part. And in statistics, you're going to look at two different things. You're going to look at measures of center and you're going to look at probability, okay? Now obviously once again, this is going to quick run through, but you guys are tutors, you can handle it. The measures of center, you should probably know, are the mean, median, and mode. Okay? And in probability, we're primarily going to be concerned with simple probability and the counting principle. So those are the two areas we're going to look at. Now, mean, median, and mode. The mean is the numeric average. Which is to say you sum all values and you divide by the number 